Now, how many of y'all were here last year? Stand up. Well, I'll make you do a little exercise. There you go. Wow. That's a good crowd. You may be sitting down. You may sit down. The rest of you are, are, are probably new or you've been here before and came. You missed last year, but we're glad you're here. But listen, folks, last year was a wonderful year. And last year, we've seen God move. But Friday night, especially God showed up in this tabernacle Friday night. People were getting right. Uh, Brother Lake's son had got saved and been battling that for a little while. And it was a memorable night. Would you agree? Amen. Amen. And God did a lot of things in our hearts that week and made decisions. But then we went back to school. Back to the neighborhood. Back to the, back to the friends and back to the problems at home. But how long did it take before we were lured back in to the things that we maybe asked God to help us to get victory over. Or maybe we said, you know, we're not going to do that anymore. Or I'm going to take a stand in school. And I'm going to witness to this person. Or I'm going to do that. How long does it take? Listen, I grew up where you were. I was at youth camp every year since I was 12 years old. Matter of fact, I've never missed a youth camp since I was 12. And now I'm preaching youth camps and, and help run a youth camp. But I was where you sat. Where I was making decisions, and I'd weeping, and year after year I'd come back, and, and I, I had messed up, and I, things that I had promised God to do that, man, I didn't do. And it, was, it wasn't until 19 years old, 12 to 19 at youth camp, that I finally surrendered all, and I took off, if you will. You say, what do you mean? What I mean is I begin to grow. I stopped doing this. Stop going up and down. You know what one of my goals is this week is that you stop doing this. And that you begin to rise and you begin to grow. I'm glad for these meetings and I'm glad for the altar and we should keep on coming to the altar and we should keep on pouring our hearts out. That's why we have these meetings, but this should come a point in time in your life where, it, listen, you start to grow. Not that you come to youth camp and you don't get on the altar, but then you begin to minister. Instead of you being the one backslidden. Instead of you being the one. Look at, look at, look at 2 Peter here. You with me? Say woo woo. There we go. 2 Peter uh, chapter 2. Uh, look at verse 18. For when they spoke great swelling words of vanity, they, what does it say? Lord, through the lust of their flesh, through much wantingness, those that were a clean escaped from them who uh, lived in error. While some promised them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought into bondage. What he's saying there, you might overcome some of your life, but it's a, a lot of times it's the same thing that brings you back into bondage. Look what it says. Verse 20, for if after they had escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled, entangled therein and overcome. And the latter end is worse than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment and deliver unto them. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog has returned to his vomit, his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to the swall uh, wallowing in the mire. You know, we have young people, we have a lot of Christians, we have a lot of young people. I was one of them. That would go back to that dog vomit. I'd be washed, cleaned up, and I'd go back to the mire. But I'd play the church game. And nobody knew. But down deep in my heart, I was backslidden again. I wonder if that's you tonight. I wonder if that's you tonight. Maybe there's an adult in here. 
Maybe it's you. I don't know. But I know one thing. We got a good God Amen. that doesn't run out of Ajax. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, listen. He cleans the throw up up. Amen. He gives you a good meal. Amen. Help me out, boys. Amen. We got a good God like that. But wouldn't it be nice that you get past it? It'd be nice you get past it. It'd be nice if you get victory over it. It'd be nice that, hey, listen, when you go back, you take that stand. And hopefully this week you do. Let me tell you a little story. When Israel was a little boy, about four or five years old, uh, one summer afternoon, we, me and my wife would like to go down to Silver Lake and we'd like to feed the ducks. Now listen, when you take some bread and you, we take a loaf of bread out there and you want to feed ducks, they come from all over. I think I had some from Canada. They came from all over in Delaware. I mean, we'd have a congregation of ducks come up there. Quack, 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 quack. And Israel loved it. He's, he's 18 now, but he was four or five years old. And, uh, and we would take these, uh, uh, these, uh, this bread out there. And I, I noticed a little duck that had a hook in his mouth. I noticed a little duck. Uh, Y'all know what this is? It's a what? It's a lure. And he had this lure, something like this. Girls, you see that? See those hooks there? There's string on this thing. I'm not a fisherman. I don't go fishing. I, I got this from a guy that fished. But see that right there? That's what that little duck had on him. You know what's crazy about that little duck? That little duck went right here. This one was hooked to his lip right here. And then the other one in the back was the hook at the back of his neck. Yeah, you girls can say it. Aw. Right? That's how I felt. Now, I'm not an animal uh, lover so much and, uh, as uh, some people get a little crazy in this world. But I did feel bad for this duck. This string was under his wing. But he was hooked in every time. We would take these little bread and we would throw it out there and we'd roll up in little balls and throw it out there and all the ducks. Well, this little duck had this hook in his lip and every time he'd go down, he'd make a noise. And he'd make this noise, screeching noise, because it would dig in deeper and it would pull his mouth this way. Every time he'd stick his neck out, that hook in the back would help pull that mouth this way. And he couldn't eat any of that bread. I, so I told Israel, I said, you want to catch a duck today? He said, yeah, daddy, yeah, let's catch a duck. Man, I was like, ducky, 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 ducky. I was chasing this duck around. We were chasing this duck. He'd go out in the water. That little duck would get out in the water, and he'd get so frustrated with that hook in his mouth, he would shake his head in the water. He'd put it under water, and he'd shake it and shake it, and he'd come out of that water, and he went up on that. We, we, we threw bread back out. Other ducks would come. That little duck would come back up, and then he'd get by a tree, and he had it in his lip, and he had it in his neck, and he'd rub up against that tree, and he'd rub against that tree, and he'd make a noise. He was trying to get it out of his mouth. He couldn't get it out. I even dove for him one time and hurt myself, hallelujah, trying to catch this little duck. I was trying to catch him. So I decided, you know, this little duck's going to die if he don't get no food. So I started rolling up. I said, Israel, roll him up real small. We rolled up that bread real small. And this wonder bread is wonderful. It rolls up real tiny. Here, little thing. And I took that little ball and I said, I aimed at his head and his mouth. And when he was going like this and he tried to get that thing out, I threw it. And it went, boop. It hit his beak, boop. It hit him in the chest, boop. Every time he tried to go down and get one, the other ducks would crack at him because he's in the way. I thought, my goodness, this little duck's going to die. He's been hooked. And listen, if somebody don't help him, he's not getting that hook out. Let me tell you something, young people. I left that day. I rode home and God gave me this message called the duck with the hook in his mouth. Yeah. You know what we have in here? I want you to look at your neighbor and go, quack. quack. Look at your other neighbor and say, quack. quack. Look at your other neighbor and go, quack, quack. quack, quack. You know what we have in here? We have a bunch of ducks. Right. And I wonder who has the hook in their mouth. Amen. I wonder who has the hook in their mouth. Listen, one thing about this duck, he could not help himself personally. Now let me say something about this hook. This hook could be anything in your life that you're hooked on. But tonight, it's going to be just pride. 
You hear me? What did I say, girls? It's just going to be what? Pride. Boys, what did I say? Pride. It's going to be your pride. Right. When I preach this message, sometimes I talk about a bunch of different sins that you could be hooked on. But tonight, it's going to be your pride because what's going to happen is this week, the, I believe with all my heart, the Holy Spirit of God is going to speak to you and talk to you. But it's that pride that's right. keeping you from yielding from the Spirit of God. And some of you got a hook in your mouth of pride, and it's going to keep you from yielding to what God wants you to do. Listen, there's, there's, there's some kids in here that uh, God is, uh, some young men that God's trying to call to preach, but your pride's going to keep you from answering the call. Hey, God's going to be calling somebody to go to the mission field, but hey, listen, it, God, listen, your pride's going to keep you from answering that call. Now listen to me, young people. I've been to a lot of meetings. I go to a lot of young uh, youth meetings. But it's been, it's been very, very, very slim of people being called to the ministry anymore. These preachers know. They go to meetings like that. Brother Jason knows. Uh, it's, it's very seldom that somebody comes up to me, a young man says, man, God's called me to preach. Young girl says, man, God's called me to missionary. Uh, somebody else, uh, God's called me to this. Uh, listen, it's very seldom that I hear it. You say, why? We're hooked on pride. Yeah, man. We don't hear the calling of God. God's called me into this ministry. God's called me this. Hey, listen, there's a, there's been a, there's, the devil has slowed it down. You know what we need? We need some good young men called to preach to serve God. We need some good young ladies say, hey, listen, I'm going to surrender my life to purity. Some of y'all did that last year with the crowns. I hope you kept it. There's some of you going to be called to, to go home and separate from friends and you won't do it. That hook of pride. You say, you say what, 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 what is about this little duck? This little duck, the hook in his mouth, he could not help himself personally. You know what that little duck would do? He'd go out in that water and he'd shake his head and shake his head. He'd get up on the land and he'd rub it across the ground. He'd rub it up against the tree. He could not get that hook out of his mouth. You know the Bible says, not by works. Not by works of righteousness. You know what it is? We got a lot of young people think, well, you know what? I got this secret sin in my life. I got something in my heart. I got this pride. Now, I don't want to give this thing up. I got something secret. But you know what? I'm going to dress the part. I'm going to act the part. That was me. And you think that, oh, I'm going to do all the right things. It's not by your works that you're going to get that hook out of your mouth. It's good to live right. It's good to dress right. It's good to talk right. But those things ain't going to help you get that pride out of your mouth. It's just not going to do it. We want our kids to live right. We want our kids. But your heart could be so far from God. You can have that hook so deep in there. You can, listen, I've seen, listen, I, I've seen kids after kids after kids play the church game. And when they get out at 18 years old, tattoos, alcohol, I don't want nothing to do with God. Maybe, maybe it's that way. No tattoos, no alcohol, but I don't want nothing to do with God. I don't want nothing to do with church. You say, what happened? They were hooked with pride. There was a time in their life that God tried to uh, convict them and help them and encourage them, and they didn't yield to the Spirit of God. Didn't yield to the Spirit of God. A lot of us think good works is going to help us get that hook out. Good works ain't going to get you get it out. Hey, listen, he couldn't help. He couldn't get help from the people. He couldn't help himself personally, but he can't get help from the people. You know what happens? You start comparing yourselves among yourselves. You're not wise. Well, I'm doing better than them, but you got some secret pride thing in your heart or some sin. And you're comparing yourself because you got your outward appearance and you're fooling everybody. It's what it is. A little boy told his mama one time, he says, uh, he told his mama, she says, I'm as big as Goliath. She said, how do you do that? How do you know you're as big as Goliath? Little old boy. He said, I made my own ruler. You know what we have? We got a lot of young people, a lot of Christians that make their own rulers. 
And you know what it ends up to be? Pride. Because your standard, if they're not living by your standard, then guess what? They ain't right with God. And I should be doing that. And I should be doing this. That's how church kids are. Not all of them. But ones that have a hook in their mouth. Has a hook in his mouth. When you try to help, when, you, uh, when, you, when somebody tries to help somebody that has a hook in their mouth and you give them advice and they don't listen to it. And then they don't listen to it. And they don't listen to it. And they keep on coming back and wanting advice and they don't listen to it. It gets annoying and frustrating. You say, why? Because they got this hook in their mouth and they won't do what they need to do to get it out. Listen, you can't help yourself to get this out. The people in the church can't help you get it out. Matter of fact, the world can't help you get it out. Remember, it's hooked on your lip and hooked on the back of your neck. It controls where you go. I got thinking about this hook and thought, man, how in the world did that little duck get this thing? That guy could have been just fishing and, and, and this thing got stuck somewhere and he just cut it off and later on through the storms and all that got loose and it's just floating out there. And he looked at it and he said, man, that looks good. And he bit that thing. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, this is what happens with sin. You bite it. And right there, it's just hooked. But then you start to shake it off because by yourself and it swings around and hooks the back of your neck. And it got you. You know what we want to see this week? We want to see that hook get pulled out of your mouth. We want to see God take it all the way out and never go back in. Hey, listen, that duck with the hook in his mouth, he was suffering. Here's another thing. Uh, that little duck, he couldn't get help from the preaching. You say, what's the preaching? The Bible says that the Lord, the, the Lord is like the bread of life. And I was throwing bread at him. Hallelujah. I wanted to feed that little duck. Amen. Listen, all them, all, them, all them other ducks were quacking at him. They were irritated with him. They were frustrated with him. He was getting in the way. Uh, all that kind of stuff. He was trying to go in the water, take that, that uh, hook out. He was on the tree trying to take the hook out. He was trying to do all those things. And then I come along and I'm trying to feed him. You know what happens at your church sometimes and your youth pastor? They know what you're going through and they try to feed you. Right. And you know what happens? Boop. Yeah. Boop. You're right. Hit your beak. Boop. You say, why? You got your hook in your mouth. You know what's going to happen this week? We're going to be preaching, and boy, we're going to throw some food out there, and it's going to go boop. Yeah. Somebody's going to say something to you, try to help you out, and you're going to have an attitude. <laughs> and then you're going to try to do it. Well, I'll just do it when I get home. Do it yourself. No, you can't do that. You're saying, preaching can't even help me. I'm telling you right now, my preaching cannot help you. <gasps> that would fiberglass some preachers. But my preaching can't help you. You know how many times I've tried preaching my heart out? Listen, when I was a young pastor, I'd call my teens out. I had 70 teenagers in my, in my classroom. Brother Victor, I'd call him out. Or if I knew something was going on, I would talk about it and put my hand on him. All the kids knew. I'd just put my hand on him because all the kids knew it was him. I, I, I didn't have any uh, discernment back then. But I was in my heart. I wanted to help him. But my preaching right now ain't going to help you. You say, why? It's a, it's a hook of pride in your mouth. You can't help yourself. None of these people in this room can help you. And not even my preaching can help you tonight. I tried to feed that little duck. Man, I tried. I really tried. Israel was trying. Israel, he balled up a little big one and threw it at him. I was like, whoa, you're going to take his head off. You know? <laughs> but I throw them little things and I try to feed them. You know what your preacher does? You know what your youth pastor does? Maybe your mama. If you say mama and daddy preaching a message, they're throwing stuff. They're trying to feed you. And you know what it does? Boop. Boop. And then it just gets frustrating after a while. You say, why? Because I don't care who the preacher is. Their preaching can't even help you. You say, man, that's a, that's a strong statement. And some of you preachers are here thinking, well, no, I know. You're, you're fooling yourself. You're right. 
You're fooling yourself, preacher. If you think your preaching can help somebody take a hook out of their mouth, our preaching can't do it. Right. Oh, God uses the foolishness of the preaching. Yes, he uses it, but I can't take the hook out. I've seen them bow up right in their chairs. I've seen them come down to the altar and you pray with them. I've seen them bow up. That pride's so strong. You know, the Bible says that the devil is the king uh, of all the children of what? And you think, I'm going to have power against that? Michael Archangel says, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. Yeah. I'm talking about a hook of pride. You know what I have to ask myself all the time? Lord, is it my pride in the way? I don't want that hook. I, I remember all those years from 12 to, to 19 years old that I had that hook that just kept me down. And I've been under some of the greatest preaching that this country's ever heard. Some of the greatest preachers. I've heard them all. I've listened to them. And my hook of pride had kept me from yielding to what the Holy Spirit of God wants to do in my life. Listen, preaching can't even help you. It's a scary place. Yes, Come on. It's a serious place. Yes, when God's preachers can't even touch your heart. Right. When you feel it's just a game. I said, little duck, let me feed you. Little duck, can I give you something? Yeah. Little duck, you're going to die. I don't want to see you die, little duck. I want to feed you something, little duck. Just take this little bread. And he wouldn't let the preaching help him. Boop. Go, you know what's coming right now? Some of you, boop, off your heart. Boop. Some of you adults, same thing. Some of you adults got to get something right this week. And it's going, boop, boop. Listen, that hook of pride is so powerful. It guides you in your life. If you could sit at the desk where men and women had come and wept over the decisions that they made and the things that they've done. Or you sit behind bars as Brother Holloman and Brother Lutrick, I know, have done a lot of preaching in the prisons down in Texas. All over that place. And hear those men cry. And it was their pride that got them there. I remember Brother Jim Benny talking about he said, I, he said, man, I, I, we and my wife couldn't have kids, so we adopted this little boy, and he was, he's a biblical counselor, and he said, listen, what we were going to do is we are going to uh, uh, raise the, the poster child for Christianity. And he raised that boy, but you know that boy, he had to go visit him in jail. He said, why? That boy pulled a trigger, trigger and killed somebody at 20-some years old. He said, I sat... Uh, behind the bars or the, or the glass and I wept to my boy and said what did I do wrong what did I do wrong he said daddy you didn't do nothing wrong he said I pulled the trigger hey listen young people preaching can't even help that get that hook of pride out of you not only that The preacher can't even help you. That little duck, I chased him around and 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 I couldn't catch him. There's some of you here, your youth pastor's been chasing you around, your pastor's been chasing you around. He finally got you here, but he still can't catch you. You say, why? Because you won't let him. You won't let him. That hook of pride, boy, we try to pin you in the corner. Can't find. It, it amazes me. You go to Walmart and somebody sees you and they go. Or they're looking at you and then they go, like you don't, they don't see you. And then you go up and say, hey, how you, oh, I didn't know you were there, preacher. People hide. I remember I was in Bible school and Bobby Ware came in. Bobby Ware was a boxer. He was a professional boxer, got saved. Started a church in Orlando, Florida. I, I've been to his church, a pretty big church. It's going good. And his brother took it over. 
and he was evangelist, and Bobby Ware was an older man. But he said when he was pastoring that church in Orlando, Florida, he had two ladies come to him and said, would you cry? And I said, preacher, would you go visit? Would you please go visit my boys and make sure they come to church? And Bobby Ware said what he did was this. Bobby Ware said, hey, listen, I, I, I went to their house at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, one of the boys, and he knocked on the door. And he said, I heard people inside. And they're like, shh, the preacher's there. Shh, don't do nothing. Shh, don't, the preacher's there. Don't look out the window, kids. The preacher's there. He said, he said, I yelled in there, I know you're in there. Nothing came out. So he sat on the front porch and he sang Amazing Grace and he read his Bible out loud. And finally, after four hours, he hears out the window. He said this, no lie. He said, after four hours, they said, hey, preacher, we don't want to talk to you. Can you please leave our porch? And he said, I stopped singing and read my Bible. I said, hey. Uh, I promise your mama I see you face to face. I ain't leaving till you come out. It was 3 o'clock in the morning when they finally yielded. He sat on that front porch at 3 o'clock in the morning, reading and singing and uh, on his phone and calling people and ministering and everything. And they finally came out and they said, okay, preacher, what is it? What is it? He said, he said, so good to see you. Man, we miss you at church. And your mama wants you in church. And God wants you in church. And we want to see you in church. God bless you. And he said, I walked off the steps and the boy goes, that's it? He said, yep, that was it. He goes, that's it? He said, yep, all you had to do was see me. I, I wanted to invite you to church. But he waited at 3 o'clock in the morning. He said, the next one. He knocked on the door. The young guy opened the door and went, ah! And literally yelled and ran. He said, I didn't know what else to do. I opened this door and chased him. He said, I chased him around this table. And he said, he went out the back door. I tackled him in the yard and said, your mama wants to see you in church. You know what I thought? That's some serious visitation. Hallelujah. Yeah, like that. That's serious visitation. Guys, there's people that we go and see. And we see them. And we knock on the doors. And we call them. And we beg them. But we can't even take that hook of pride out. They're always hiding. You know what's going to happen this week? The Holy Spirit of God is going to be moving in this building. And I believe God's moving right now. And you're going to be hiding. You're hiding. You're trying to make it look like everything's okay. You're hiding. That's what you're doing. You're just a hiding. Listen. God's people can't even help you. The preacher can't even help you. You can't even help yourself. And the preaching can't even help you. It's a dangerous place. Part of the story I didn't tell you. Isabel, why don't you come to the piano? Part of the story I didn't tell you. When I left there that day, I was so brokenhearted, Brother Eric, that I couldn't catch that duck. I, all I want to do, I tell that little duck, all I want to do is take that hook out of your mouth. Take it out of your neck. I was pleading with him. People would come by and said, sir, who are you talking to? I said, look at that little duck. And they were like, oh, you know, look at that duck. And, and they just kept on walking. But I was concerned. So what I did, and you can start playing, honey. What I did is I, I picked up my phone, and back then it was a flip phone. <laughs> Flipped it, called 911. I got 911, they said, hello, is this an emergency? Or, and I said, no, it's not an emergency, but I'm here at the lake here, Silver Lake. And I said, I need to talk to somebody about a duck. Could you direct me to the right place? She said, sure. So she directed me to the, to the right place, and I forget the name of it. I called, and they said, how, how can we help you? And I said, yes, I'm at Silver Lake, and there's a duck out here. And, and she stopped me. She said, oh, the duck with the hook in his mouth? And I went, ma'am, how'd you know? She said, we've had many calls. We've had many calls. I said, well, what, what's going on? She said, we send our guys out there every time, but they can't catch them. 
They can't catch him. A little duck, and not a big duck, a little duck. They couldn't catch him. Listen, young people. Nobody can catch you. I've seen it. Nobody can catch you. You say, well, what, what, what's the hope? Let me show you. Let me show you what the hope is. The Bible says this, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Listen, the only person that can help you take the hook out is you. You say, oh no, that's against Bible. No, 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 no. God's never going to hold a gun to your head. Right. You're right. Yes, sir. God's never going to force you. He wants you to love him and he wants you to come to him humbly and humble yourself. The Bible says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. You say, well, no, God will humble you. Yes, I've seen God humble people and even humble me and I never got the pride out. It's until you humble yourselves that God can reach down in that heart and be able to take that hook out and off your neck and off your mouth and take that hook of pride out. But it's until you say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to humble myself. I need to humble myself. See, we live in America. It's about pride. It's about, hey, we're number one. But we're the best thing. Hey, listen, you get on your Facebook page and all your stuff you got, and you put on there how bad you are, how good you are. You think you're the best thing that's ever happened uh, since sliced bread? But our pride takes over. And the Holy Spirit of God can't move with us in these meetings because we're hooked with this pride. We're hooked in our mouth. We're hooked in our hearts. We're hooked on our necks. But it's going to take you humbling yourself. Right there, if you have your Bibles, look at this at 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. I want you to look at it. 1 Peter chapter 5, two verses. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves to the older. Oh, that's not going on in America. Oh, they're teaching you to despise authority. Help me out, preachers. They're teaching them to despise authority, despise the cops. Hey, let's take money away from the cops. Hey, listen, we don't want their authority. I understand they're bad cops. The, the military, we don't want that. Hey, listen, they're teaching you that. This is what I was talking about. It's all about pride. I could do what I want. I'll do what I want to do. I don't care. No, I ain't going to have somebody, some, some, some pig tell me. I'm not going to have some authority over me. It is seeped in the church, and you can't even submit yourself to your own church pastor. I've seen grown men, grown ladies, they're hooked. It says, submit yourselves uh, under the, uh, the elder. Yea, all of you that, that are, uh, be subject one to another and clothed with what? Humility. But God resisted the proud. Whew. God, I don't want you to resist me. But he giveth grace unto the humble. He gives grace unto the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Why don't you stand? Hey, listen, it's going to take you. But he giveth more grace, the Bible says. Therefore, he said, God resisted the proud, but he giveth grace to the humble. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be resisted this week. Girls, I don't want God to resist you this week because you've got that hook in your mouth. You need to come down here and humble yourself. And you might need to get right with mom and daddy. He said, I've been rebellious. Maybe your youth pastor or youth pastor's wife or maybe some authority in your life said, man, I've been a, a, a jerk. I've been rebellious in my heart towards you. And I'm sorry, I'm going to humble myself to you. I want to be humble. I want God to use me. I want his grace in my life. I want God to move in a mighty way this week on me and my heart uh, because I want to see God do something in my life and change my life. Why don't you come? Altar's open. Why don't you come? God's, God spoke to your heart. Why don't you come? You're that little duck with the hook in his mouth. Oh, I could tell you stories. I could tell you stories about young people. I've watched them hard. I've, I've watched God 
uh, humble them and they wouldn't get humbled and then I've watched them humble themselves and I've watched God do amazing things in their life. A duck with a hook in his mouth. 